Hey everybody, this is Jen from Garden Jen's Journey. I know I haven't done a video in a little while. The weather's been really crummy, so I haven't been able to get outside and take a video. Uh, we also have had really slow growth and things in the garden because of the weather. But now we do have some new things to share. So I'm going to take you along to the garden and show you what's going on. All right, so first thing is first, want to take you out here to this special surprise we had. Um, we had a broody hen, one of our Isa um, browns was uh, really broody. And uh, we decided to try an experiment because we wanted some more chicks. We put um, some eggs underneath her and we made sure to mark which ones that they were because sometimes she would move from nest to nest or nest um, nesting box where they laid their eggs and uh, we'd have to make sure that we uh, put her or the eggs back underneath her um, and then yesterday my husband came out and uh, he noticed something and I will show you in just a minute here so you can see we have a broody hen with some babies. She's got three. And you can only see two at the moment. But she's got three. Uh, she's got two of those yellow looking ones. And then she does have another red one. It's probably underneath her hiding. It's not as social. But uh, yeah, so mama hen here hatched some babies. And she's been doing a very good job taking care of them. Okay, so this is our special patch of tomatoes, the ones that we're growing uh, specifically to save the seed from. And um, they're starting to come along. They're an orange peach variety, so you see a lot of the orange uh, tomatoes. That's actually the color that they're supposed to be. Uh, so we have 24, we have 48 plants in here. Um, Maybe 46 now. We did lose a couple to um, the weather. <clears throat> but um, they were slow to ripen. And then we just started topping them off so they quit growing and put more effort into ripening. And uh, now we have a lot more that are starting to ripen. We come out here about every other day and uh, pick the ones that are almost fully ripe and then put them in the bucket so they can ripen inside. Um, so they don't split and things out here because of the constant moisture issue it's, that we're having right now. So that's the update on our special Baker Creek bed. So this is our container bed area. And uh, things are going okay. They're starting to die back here on this, this side. Um, I do have my little mini popcorn corn going on. You can see how tiny they are. They're just really tiny ears of corn. And uh, they're going to stay here until they look like this guy. This guy ended up dying because um, my husband moved it and the roots were actually down in the ground so he actually uprooted it and killed them. But that's okay. We have enough just to um, see what they're like and uh, plant some more seeds tomorrow or next year. And of course Smoke Bomb has to say hello. So um, this is a bunch of this and that in here. I just planted some more giant noble spinach because we really enjoyed it. I'm going to start harvesting some of that. I put my miniature rose in here and it's starting to form a bud so that's really cool. I have some lavender, um, some marjoram, some basil that I threw in here, extras I had left over. <clears throat> I did have the Hungarian wax peppers here with the oregano, um, but I really didn't like the, the peppers. They were disgusting to me. And this is kind of what they look like. Um, but I just took them out and uh, fed them to the chickens. <clears throat> These are supposed to be red bell peppers. Um, they're not very big, even with the fertilizer. This one's about the biggest one we had. Just because the weather has been so horrible this year, um, not just for us, but for everybody. So, yeah. And then I planted some more lettuces. 
um, for our fall garden and those are just starting now to come up and then I have a um, orange peach shalosa and another one back there and this is my um, Swiss chard my rainbow chard and I'm letting it go to seed so I can collect the seed for next year and then same with my snapdragons they're um, ending their lifespan so I have a bunch of seed pods in here I'll be saving. Smoke bombs the killer for attention. I have different varieties of basil there. Um, my Utah celery it's not doing the best just because I've got it too cramped and it's not getting the right amount of water. Uh, my bachelor buttons are done. I only have a few blooms left. Bunch of seed pods to start collecting though that's why I leave them. And then of course my strawberries. I have my catnip plant that I grew from seed in this bucket protected from the kittens because um, cats love catnip and if you don't protect it um, they can kill it. Especially since we have four outdoor cats um, we have to make sure that we keep a viable specimen um, for my herbal use. These are the giant radishes that I am growing. I grew one um, this spring. You can see the size of that. They're starting to split a little bit because of the weather. But I grew um, one and it was really huge, about the size of a coffee mug. Saved the seed from that and I planted these all from the um, one that I had from the spring. More basil. And then look at my lemongrass. I have never let my lemongrass get this tall before. I've always been trimming it and keeping the, uh, the grass part, but I let it grow really tall this time because it's supposed to be a mosquito repellent. And also the stuff that you want to save, I guess, is the, the thicker stem at the bottom of the plant. So I've just been letting this grow. It is really pretty. I enjoy looking at it. This is one of my yellow pear tomatoes and you can see how tall it got. It's an indeterminate and I topped that one off too. That way it started ripening because it was growing all this fruit but not ripening. And then with all the rain we got, you can see I'm starting to have some splits. Um, so yeah, I have to get these ripening. Our first frost date in my area is supposed to be the end of the month. So um, I don't have much time to get these tomatoes ripen and get them off the vine before then. This is another beautiful plant for me. This is a giant uh, lima bean. I got it from a lady in my gardening group. So excited, there's a long story to that. But as you can see, I do have some wonderful pods going and these will get just a little bit bigger because the the seeds themselves are almost the size of a 50 cent piece so i'm really excited about those um, there's just going to be enough this year to save seeds to grow next year because um, i only had three plants that actually grew from the seeds um, because of the weather we've had so i'm just very excited that we actually have some pods growing from the three plants that um, did grow. This is the big rainbow tomato. Um, same thing, I started producing lots of fruit late in the season. Um, and then um, with a cooler weather, we had to stop the growth and get it to get these guys ripened before we lose them. So excited to see what these guys are like. I have not gotten any that were um, not ruined by either bugs or being split because of the the other sun and all the rain but i do have quite a few on there as you can see so hopefully we'll be see able to see what they taste like all right i showed you guys this before but it's really exciting this is my mongolian giant sunflower i have three plants right here the tallest one um, when it was standing straight up, it was 14 foot tall. Um, now it's kind of hunched over because the seed head is very, very heavy. Not quite ripe yet though, so um, can't harvest the seeds from it yet. But I have them all supported um, because the head is really, really huge. Um, hard to show you here. Um, 
but it's bigger than a dinner plate. These ones are about the size of the dinner plate, small one. So I have them supported because we get really, really uh, intense west winds and it just knocks everything down. So I have these supported so they don't break with that wind. All right, so into the main garden we go. These are some of my other yellow pears. And then right next to them is the pink bumbleberry. These are all indeterminates and they should have gotten a lot taller, but because of the weather, they, they were stunted as far as being able to really grow. And I had to top them again because um, our, fall is, or our frost is coming up soon, so we need to get them ripened. This is the um, Berry's Crazy Cherry Tomato. You can see I have lots of fruit on it. Same thing, we had to top it um, because we have to get all this fruit ready to go um, before the first frost. And then right next to it, there's not much left. This is my Golden Nugget Tomatoes. And it's actually a determinate variety and I didn't know that. So I single stemmed it like I did an indeterminate variety. Um, they produce quite a bit of fruit. I'm still on the fence about whether I'm going to grow this one again or not. I'm um, not sure if I'm going to grow um, crazy berries or not. Uh, the flavor is just a little different, um, but we'll decide between now and next year. Um, definitely growing the pink bumblebee because I really, really enjoy that. And I'm going to be trying a new variety. It's called, uh, I think, the black cherry tomato. I think it's what it's called. Um, it's from MI Gardener. Um, because I'm trying to increase the amount of colors that we have in our uh, diet. So I have um, the yellows and then the, uh, the pinks and then um, the black will have a lot more antioxidants in it. So I'm going to try that and see if I actually like that and see how that goes. <clears throat> My rose garden. You can see I have a calna lily. My husband was surprised. He did not think that this was actually what it is because I grew this from seeds. Somebody gave me some seeds and a seed swap and these beautiful lilies grew from seed. So very exciting. They're really, really pretty. And then of course all my calendula. All different colors of calendula. And then right next to the calendula is galaria. And then uh, some sedum back there. Really pretty colored sedum. Uh, those were grapevines loaded with grapes, but I don't have any grapes anymore. Um, we think the birds ate them all. Not sure, but anyway. And then this is my corn patch. When I said we have really strong winds, we do. This isn't from critters coming in and knocking this down. This is from the high winds we have and then the torrential rains we had from the last couple of storms. So it's really done a number on my corn. Um, this is Paswaga blue corn. It's a drying type corn. You use it to make corn meal. And uh, you can see how large um, the ears are. This one actually outgrew its, its ear. It was standing out like this far. Um, this is a good two foot long um, ear. But uh, let's see if I can show you what they look like. A little bit. I've been checking this to make sure we don't have um, lots of army worms and uh, oh, what's the other one? Uh, the corn cob worm. I can't remember what it's called. But you can see the beautiful dark blue color, almost a black color um, that that is. It's really pretty. And so that'll make a beautiful blue corn meal. <clears throat> My flower bed, my pollinator bed as I call it. Um, I have some nasturtiums that finally came up. Took them a long time, but they've really, really grown. This is the first year in four that I've actually had nasturtiums grow this good. Um, they just never really took off for me before. And then I have the borage. This is calendula. Again, more bachelor buttons, seed heads, and I just let them be. I'm hoping that they might reseed themselves here. Not sure. Uh, bee balm. Uh, we cut that down because it was done and it's slowly growing back. Um, and then some more nasturtium. 
And of course my tansy. My tansy's starting to die back. <clears throat> and then tucked in down there, you really can't see it too well, um, I have some red cocks comb. I did not realize that the tansy was going to get this tall when I planned my cocks comb. So next year I won't be playing my cocks comb there. This is my tomatoes. These are Roma tomatoes. And they're supposed to be just a regular Amish paste, but I noticed I've had some pretty big ones. Um, if you look up Baker Creek in the Hungarian heart tomato, it's a giant Roma tomato, Roma type tomato, paste type tomato that gets about as big as a, a softball. Here's a smaller one. You can see how big that is in my hand. Um, I had some that we took up my whole hand. They're huge tomatoes. There's one on the ground over here. See how big that tomato is? That is a Roma tomato. So, um, and they produce a lot of, of meat that is really good for making a good um, uh, tomato sauce. So definitely going to be growing um, those this year. You can see uh, disease is starting to take over the tomato plants. It's almost the end of the season basically for these guys. Um, but again, we've had a lot of rain, a lot of cold moisture. Tomatoes hate that. So we're salvaging what we can and uh, just going from there. This is my medicinal herb bed. You can see how beautiful the orange peach cocks comb is. This is from Baker Creek and this thing gets really, really tall and it has two different kinds of blooms on it. It's got the cocks comb, really beautiful cocks comb, and then it's got the celosia paintbrush on here. So it's kind of like a double um, flower. It's really gorgeous. The pollinators love it. So I grow this every year now because it's just a wonderful plant. I have some lemon balm and then mixed in with my lemon balm was an accident. I have um, stinging nettle in here too. It um, got out of control out of the pot that I used to have it in. Um, but I wear gloves and I don't walk in here barefoot or anything. So I just go in and I just pull out the stinging nettle and dehydrate it. This is valerian. Then we have some stevia. We have a huge thorn. <laughs> With this weather, I have not been pulling weeds, so the thorn is where it is. Fennel, and again, like I said, with our winds, um, this is a mammoth marigold. I actually staked it because of the winds. Um, the other ones blew over. You can see them laying on the ground, but this was the biggest one, so I made sure to stake it. <clears throat> so, yeah. We got some chives. Um, this is whorehound back here behind the um, milkweed. Some echinacea. A lot of Queen's Anne lace. Um, pollinators like it, so I leave it be. Same with the goldenrod. Um, yes, it looks kind of weedy to some people, but this is actually a wildflower that um, the bees really enjoy. And this time of year, they kind of need it as the other blooms are starting to die off the other plants. But I still have quite a few other flowers. I have my petunias going on. My sage. My fig trees. They didn't do well this year because of the weather. Um, they did grow a lot more than they grew last year. So I'm hoping that next year that the fourth year is a charm um, and that the weather cooperates a little more. Then this is my other um, garden bed for my lettuces and spinach, my other petunias. I used to have some beans here, but they had died out, so I just put petunias there, and I just let them go, and uh, it helps keep the pollinators in this area because I have um, my beans. These are blue hide beans. Um, and they've been doing very, very well. Um, I actually have to pick some more beans because they, they just are producing like crazy. So yeah, these are blue hide. This is the current tomato. It's a cute little tomato. If you're into cute little things, um, it's just been a pain in the butt to maintain and try to pick because they're very tiny, uh, very numerous little tomatoes. 
and um, the vines just grow everywhere so if you're not into something high maintenance I would not recommend this plant because it's very high maintenance but um, if you're into trying new things that are kind of cool and unique um, definitely try this one this is my red Russian kale and then I have some more of those Hungarian wax beans I was telling you about that I'm not really thrilled with um, I have some mini bell peppers there and these are supposed to be regular bells then I have um, Swiss chard this is trail of tears bean that I grow specifically for um, a dried bean even though you can actually harvest them when they're young for a green bean I um, grow them specifically for a dried bean they're basically like a black bean and then um, I have the rattlesnake bean no this is dragon's tongue sorry dragon's tongue bean and I didn't realize that it was a bush bean so I planted it uh, to grow up the poles and it's a bush bean so haven't seen any beans on it yet um, we'll keep watching though all right this is my elderberries you can see they are heavily laden with fruit and some of them have gotten knocked down because of the wind and the torrential rain we've been picking these about every other day uh, just because they need time to ripen like these guys here beautiful they see how they're just falling off these guys are ready to harvest and I dehydrate them um, for later use um, and then I use them to make uh, elderberry cold and cough syrup um, you'll have to google that if you're interested and see how that that uh, supposedly works but that's what I do with them a lot of people make elderberry pies or even jam elderberries are a wonderful fruit however you have to cook them before you can consume them otherwise they are poisonous my dino kale uh, is doing really good I trim it every couple weeks and take some to the farmers market with us um, some basil my eggplant I'm not sure what happened to it something killed it and I was like man because I was so happy I actually had a eggplant from it so and then I have uh, some more sage I have sage planted in various spots in my garden because it's a good insect repelling um, herb because it the, the smell is so stout so I have um, sage and I have basil as far as my repellent herbs my cabbage is basically done for I feed what's left here to the chickens they really enjoy it my broccoli this is the first time I actually had broccoli this year I'll actually harvest that for supper tonight and the other one I'm just letting it go um, you can see I have those cabbage moths everywhere and what I do with them is I just dust the plant with some DE when I start seeing some damage um, I've been dusting this about once a week but um, yeah when I see some damage I just take some DE and I lightly dust it and it dehydrates the worms and kills them on the ground I have watermelon this here is early moon beam I did have a black tail mountain uh, watermelon but we harvested it too soon and uh, it got wasted for us anyway but the chickens enjoyed it but yeah I have a couple of different early moon beams which is awesome uh, we've never had watermelon successfully grow here so this is a big success story for us all right one of our last beds here uh, this is my uh, cucumbers and I have some uh, summer squash uh, calendula I have a whole bunch of stuff tucked in here uh, these are Kentucky Wonder Pole beans uh, they're producing abundantly I'm really excited now the sun's going to come out and give us quite a glare <laughs> and then if you can see the little sticks that are sticking out there those are my loofah gourds those are the male flowers from what I'm understanding oh, we have a cucumber interesting um, but yeah those are the male flowers of the loofah and if I can find you one I'll show you a female loofah we have one these are triumphal violetto beans 
Um, they're kind of like the lima beans. I lost quite a few beans because of the frost. So the b few beans I had left, um, I planted them and uh, these will be saved for seeds so I can grow them next year. All right, let's see if I can find that loofah. Not sure if I'll be able to or not, especially with the glare. <clears throat> but you can see how my uh, beans are doing. Doing really well. Look at these beautiful pods. Lots of good seed there. Well, I couldn't find a, a female loofah um, gourd, but that's okay. I'll show it to you next time I can find it. <laughs> These are my other peppers that I grew in here to try to give them some advantage with the greenhouse staying warmer. I have the lipstick bell pepper here. And then I have, these are my Jimmy Nardellos. And they're really behind, but they're starting to produce some fruit. So excited about that. These are my jalapenos, and they're producing quite a few jalapenos. Not too thrilled about this variety, though. It seems really meaty. It's not very hollow like most peppers are. And to me, it tastes like a bland, regular pepper. So I'm not sure, you know, what's going on there. Um, why it's tasting so funky. Okay, so this is the last of the garden on this side. I have some cucumbers there. I'm letting them uh, get really ripe so I can save the seeds for next year. And then the cabbage uh, will go to the chickens. <clears throat> and then uh, talk about an infestation. I don't know if the camera can pick it up and I don't want to move because it grosses me out. <laughs> but this poor plant is, it's dead as the one behind it. Uh, it's just covered in squash bugs. The squash bugs have just decimated uh, my squash this year. I was able to get one squash out of each of these and then um, these guys just came in and especially with the rains because um, I use DE to dust that's what some of the brown is is the DE um, but the rain just washed it right off and so uh, yeah these bugs killed my plants. So you win some, you lose some. <clears throat> but look at that beautiful chard right behind it. Isn't it gorgeous? So even though we have death and destruction because of these stupid bugs, uh, we still have some wonderful things growing. We've got the chard. Um, we have some peppers, even though they're really small. Um, still have some growing. My beans are doing wonderfully. Um, so it's not a complete loss. Um, so I'm still very thankful for what we do have, even though we've lost a lot. I've been able to can quite a bit of food um, from what I do have. So I'm very, very thankful. Um, it's been a wacky year for us all as far as the weather. Um, very difficult. Um, but all in all, we still got food out of the garden which was a big um, bonus. And then, of course, our pollinator friends are happy because they have lots of different flowers to feed on to help them uh, grow in population and um, make somewhat of a comeback. So I thank you so much for joining me today on my walk in the garden, everybody. I hope wherever you are that you are wonderfully blessed. Take care, everybody. Bye.